Do you like beer? I like beer. This is, it's called the New Normal, an India Pale Ale. That's what I'm going to make today. And I want to take you along for the ride. It's super simple to make beer. Um, I'm blanking on what to say next, so we're supposed to do something in the beginning of the video. But I want to take you on a ride today, show you how easy it is. Pot like this, a couple other things. You can make this. Ready? Here we go. Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden fork. So while I start the introduction, this is a big stainless steel pot. I've got two gallons of water in it. The bigger the pot, the better. You might want to have one of these or get it at a dollar store. While I'm yakking, let's turn this on. Well, if I knew how to work this. There you go. Use the biggest burner on your stove you have and the biggest pot you have, and I'll explain why. You might even see why later. So this is your typical home brew kit. You have malt extract, you have some crushed grains, you have a dry malt, these are hops, and this is called a grain bag. You're also going to have some yeast. You have your choice of a dry yeast, which is kind of like bread yeast, but don't use bread yeast, okay? Get beer yeast. And this is a liquid yeast. I find that the liquid yeast, liquid yeasts work better. They're really best if you buy them from a local homebrew shop. They can also um, ship this kind of thing, but they have to keep it cold. Big tint, big tip, big hint. Um, three hours before you're gonna brew, take this out of the fridge, let it warm up. And maybe you're wondering why this kind of piece of cheesecloth sock is here. This is for steeping the grains. We're going to flavor this water to make it taste like beer. And part of that is some grains that have been crushed. Put them back. Just have a bowl here. This will go in here. This, uh, I got a scissor. Will this open? Oh, that'll kind of open. Scissors. This looks kind of like granola or oatmeal, maybe. Those are called crushed grains. Like that. There you go. So while this is heating up, we do this before the boil. But, you know, really, Follow the instructions that come with your brew kit. It does make a difference. We're gonna steep this, kind of like you're steeping tea. You know, this could be the tea bag and that's the tea water. This goes in here. And I don't really usually let that flow. I just take this and I clip it on with a little uh, laundry clip. What's this called? Clothespin, like that. So you're gonna need to brew this, ferment this somewhere and this is a fermenting bucket. It's a six gallon bucket. It's made to brew five gallons of beer. I really suggest you buy a beer brewing kit. I'll link to one that I like below the video, that text, you might have to click the down arrow to see all the text. But, oh, this makes a sound. But it has a little valve here. I've got it turned upside down right now. And some sanitizer. This is the important thing. Once the, uh, what's this called? The beer mix, wart. Once you turn the boiling heat off of that, everything from that point on has to be sanitized. And this is a great sanitizer. Some other ones on the market, use whatever you want. You can also use regular laundry chlorine bleach, but you can really stain your clothes. Ask me, I've done that. So I no longer stain my clothes because I use a sanitizer. So clean everything with the sanitizer. Do not use dish soap, soap, and beer. Bad, bad mix, okay? But clean it all up. Keep yourself clean as well. Keep your work area clean. You'll be fine. I don't mean to sound like a sterilization crazy nut, but um, this actually is kind of hard to mess up. And then at the end of it, you get to drink your own beer. So I just have a paper towel with my sanitizer, and I just go over the whole barrel bucket this, this has been in the basement, so there's a little bit of debris in the bottom. You want to clean the lid. You want to get that gasket out of there. And I'm going to put this in the bucket and clean it. How are you? Beer's cooking. Well, we're starting to make the beer. Is that exciting? Not as exciting as maybe some dog treats. Okay, this is steeped long enough per the instructions. Okay, that's hot. Um. This you can put in your compost or you can make bread out of this or incorporate it into some sort of a food. It has, um, it's, well, it has kind of a caramelly malty 
grain smell because it's it's a barley malt. Neat, huh? This is a malt extract syrup, maybe kind of like molasses-y, but if your kitchen's cold or your house is cold or this has been a cold basement, you want to warm this up, get it near the stove or somewhere that's safe that won't melt maybe. But the warmer this is, the easier it is to pour it out of here. You know, I have a rule, if all else fails, read directions. But when you're making beer, um, you should probably follow the directions. Pretty close, anyway. It's, it's really simple. It's like, it's kind of like bacon bread. A lot of it is just time, and you just kind of like breathe and like, oh, we're gonna bottle some beer, bottle beer, which happens afterward. I did a video about bottling beer a while ago. I'll link at the end of the show, okay? Okay, that's boiling. Time for the next step. Turn the heat down. This gets poured into here. All right, so this is hard to do with the camera and everything, but there's still extract, malt syrup extract in here. So I'm gonna scoop some hot water from here into here, swish it around, drop it back in. Ow! Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, wow. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, that just... And the doorbell's ringing, so hold on. Okay, uh, that was the mailman. So, um... All right, that's pretty clean. I'm happy with that. And my hand is a little warm and sticky. You'll learn this as you do this. All right, I forgot to show you, but I also poured in the powdered malt in here as well. And good. You don't have to sanitize this or sanitize this because we're gonna boil this now and the boiling will sanitize what will become the wort. I think it's after the boil's done, it's technically called the wort. If you know the answer, Please let me know in the comments. I always learn from you guys. Hops. You will add hops to your beer. And sometimes you're gonna add them at the beginning of the boil. Sometimes you're gonna add them at the middle or the end. Or sometimes when, um, like halfway through the fermentation. But these, that's kind of hard to show, isn't it? These are hops. Um, it looks like rabbit food more than anything. And these are gonna be boiling hops, and I'm gonna put these in right now. You excited about making beer? I can tell. All right, so I put in the dry malt, the extract, and I turned the burner up to high again. But you have to keep an eye on this because you wanna avoid this overflowing. See that? Um, that gets real foamy and foams over and it's not fun. So you can put the lid on, but you have to keep an eye on it as well. So this, check it once in a while, and when it starts to boil, turn the heat down. Otherwise, this foams over, and I cleaned up the mess from the previous time I made beer, because, well, um, you know what happened, it got out of hand. For someone that doesn't drink beer, you are awfully excited about beer. Okay, it just happened. That is what you want to avoid. Oh man. Let's turn the heat down. Heat goes down. Down heat. Oh. Somebody was distracting me because they wanted a treat, you, and then that. It's kind of hard to get mad at Charlie Pup though. So, I mean, it's just beer. It's not, I mean, it's fun and this will be totally fine. Okay, but it's gonna be, this is essentially liquid sugar. It's like honey syrup, maple syrup. This is malt syrup and water and hops. And now I get to clean that up. Nice. Okay, back to the boil. Um, this is 10 minutes before the end, and it says to add in another thing of hops. There we go. It smells like beer. It's very cool, um, despite the, uh, well, it's called the accident here. Um, 
But we're gonna turn this off. Oh, wrong way. Um, off, like that. Now, this is officially a wart, and after we've turned off the boiling, from this point on, everything that touches that has to be sanitized. And don't get all wigged out about that. It's not the end of the world. You just keep your hands clean, keep your bucket clean. Um, you know, there's a lot of wiggle room, let's just say, because you know how I am about this. All right, this is gonna go in here. All right, so now you've got this hot wart and you wanna add your liquid yeast, which you took out a while ago. Here's the trick. This, if you pour it in here right now, this yeast will die because it's just too darn hot in there. So there's different ways to cool this down. And ideally, you're gonna cool this down, the wart, as quickly as possible. You can get what's called a wart chiller, which is a brass piping thing you run cold water through, which I think is an incredible waste of water. You can also, I've done this, is buy ice cubes from the ice cube machine and throw a bag of ice cubes in here. That'll cool it down right quick. I'm gonna pour cold water in here and then put it outside because it's pretty darn cold out. It'll take a couple hours. It could take six hours and then we can add this in. People get all wigged out about you must pitch the yeast as quickly as possible. And by and large, that's true, yes. But this is garden fork and we're not gonna sweat it. We're gonna cool this down. We're gonna add this in and we're gonna make some beer. Hello. I gotta do a little work now, okay? Whenever I turn the camera on, she's there. So now you have to wait for the wart to cool, and that's kind of like watching paint dry, you know? Um, I put it outside. You could use a bag of ice cubes. I used cold water. That cold water spraying it in also aerates the wart. You wanna add oxygen, air, into the liquid. That's a good thing, because the yeast needs that. Notice here I have a uh, glass thing of sanitizer. is isn't completely dissolved because I don't know why. But um, ideally you have a stainless steel, some kind of stainless steel stirrer. But I'm gonna sanitize my, what's this called? Thermometer and check the temperature of this. I'm just gonna pop it open real quick, check it. I don't think it's cool enough just feeling the bottom of it, but for the camera, for you, I'll show you. 74, that's pretty good. So we're gonna take the tip of this and put that in the sanitizing solution. Take my scissors, put that in the sanitizing solution. Shake this up really well. Take this, cut that tip off, pour that in. Yeast is in time for aeration. Now, a lot of people will take the lid off and use some sort of stainless steel tool, kitchen implement that's been sanitized, to mix this whole thing up. But I'm like, you got the lid off, you're mixing maybe bad germs in there that could mess up your fermentation. I just take this puppy and I shake the heck out of it as best I can because it's five gallons of beer right now. And we already spilled a bunch of it on the stove. After a couple weeks, depending on your instructions, you'll be doing some bottling of this. And you're wondering, Eric, how do I bottle? Here's how you bottle. You follow that video. That's my bottling video. If I can do it, you can do it. This is not rocket science. There's a lot of people that get wound up all about it, but just shake it around a little bit. Wave your hands in the air a little bit. All right, there you go. Make it a great day. Let me know your thoughts. Shake your beer around. That could be a song, I guess, right? I'll see you later.